Hey, welcome back to Curiosity Hub, I'm Ali Hubbard. A few weeks ago we were hit with a huge storm and it brought down a whole bunch of trees but many still are standing and it made me think that trees really can't go anywhere in a storm and so they need to be optimised for surviving that wind coming in from every single direction. And I mean nature's full of examples of fish and birds being really streamlined. But they're only really streamlined in one direction because they can move their bodies to be in line with the direction of the flow. Uh, but trees obviously can't do that. So interestingly their circular tapering trunk and branches are optimized to be streamlined in every direction. Interestingly, about 500 years ago, Leonardo da Vinci was looking at trees and thinking about how to draw them, and looking at the branching structure. And he found a pattern in how they grow. And modern data has actually found that his pattern is pretty accurate for most species. And in fact, you can even test it yourself. I tested it on a tree out the front. Um, so if you wanna check that out, uh, feel free. But the real challenge has been finding out why. Why do trees match this pattern of growth? And it's not until recently that Christoph Eloy suggested maybe it's because of wind. So he did some research out of the University of California in San Diego, and he basically modeled trees optimized for wind resistance. So he was even thinking about for a tree to survive in a storm and throughout its life, it's better for it to fracture, you know, up in the branches rather than down in the trunk. So he was looking at the maths of optimizing uh, trees surviving wind, and he found that his model trees followed da Vinci's pattern. So we actually think that trees surviving wind is built into their very structure. So that's all good, but what about leaves? I mean, they basically act like a gigantic sail on a tree. And at first glance, they seem flexible as well. So happy days. But if you think about it, we've actually found that a weather vane and a flag that are both initially parallel to the stream of flow, between the two of them, the flag actually has the greatest drag coefficient. And you can think of the drag coefficient as um, basically how likely something is to break due to the wind. So higher the drag coefficient, goodbye tree. Um, so the flag actually has a higher drag coefficient than something like a weather vane. So when you think about needles in uh, pine trees or spruce, they're basically like tiny little mini weather vanes. But most other leaves basically represent flags. So why are they flexible? Well, thankfully, Stephen Vogel out of Duke University asked the same question. And interestingly, he found that flexibility allows shape to become a function of wind speed. And shape allows you to reduce drag. So I found that easiest to understand by just looking at some pictures of leaves in wind. So here's a picture of the tulip poplar. Just one leaf and you can see how it's rolling up to form a cone and reducing drag. But things get really cool when the leaves use their flexibility to form clusters. And interestingly, Stephen Vogel found that these clusters have dramatically less drag than the leaves by themselves, as you can see by this graph. So here you've got a picture of a cluster of white poplars. So as you can see, it's multiple leaves all lining up, forming a really nice cone to reduce drag. And the cluster is also orientated itself in the direction of the flow. Another shape that clusters can take on is an elongated cylinder. So here the leaflets of the black locust fold onto one another and they're reducing drag dramatically. And even holly can stack on itself and uh, dramatically reduce the drag. And it's really cool because these shapes actually tighten when wind speed increases. So 
they actually, the drag coefficient reduces as wind speed increases. In fact, they couldn't cause consistent damage to the clusters with the wind speeds they had available in their tunnel. And they were getting wind speeds up to 30 meters per second, so 108 kilometers per hour. However, I can hear you asking about one kind of tree that stands on the front line of hurricanes or cyclones, stands up to huge winds and fares better than almost any other tree. But it breaks every single rule in the book. The palm tree. I mean, it doesn't even have any branching to apply Leonardo da Vinci's rule to. And it's just got these huge leaves attached directly to the top of the trunk. I mean, how has it been standing up to these massive winds for almost a hundred million years? But the answer actually lies in tracing its evolution because palm trees are actually more closely related to most grasses than most trees. And how do grasses deal with wind? They just bend right over. And palm trees do the exact same thing. They just take flexibility to the extreme. So if you've ever chopped down a palm tree, you'll know that the internal structure isn't really anything that we'd recognize as conventional wood. It's more of like a tangle of spongy tissue. But it's that exact structure which allows the palm tree to have so much flexibility and bend with the wind. Now there is a slight decrease in how much weight it can support vertically, but that's okay because it's got lightweight leaves and it never has to support anything like snow. And these lightweight leaves are also adapted because when you think about it, every leaf is actually made up of a ton of really thin long leaflets. And so when it's still and sunny, the palm tree can have all of its leaves spread out in every direction and all of the leaflets spread out. But when the wind picks up, the leaflets can fold in and be in the direction of the wind. And then the leaves themselves can all fold up and streamline into the direction of the wind, reducing drag massively. It's quite similar to how the leaves on a branch on a conventional tree formed clusters in Vogel's photographs. And I think it's actually a really good example of convergent evolution where different things come up with pretty similar solutions to the same problem. But trees haven't just learnt to cope with wind, they've learnt to use it to their own advantage. And so I'll be talking about more of that and uh, kind of in a mini series about plants uh, coming up. So subscribe if you want to catch that. Uh, but I've also put all the links down to a few of the papers and a couple of the books I've been reading um, which have helped inform all this. Uh, down below so feel free to explore that ask me any questions or uh, have a chat in the comments and um, I'll see you soon thanks